is a ship. Sure, how about it? I'm sure you can...
I got them. Excuse me, this is a private... Wait. There's something familiar about you. Vasco, identify. Scanning. Cross-referencing known employee records of our affiliated organizations. Please remain still. This appears to be the miner from Argos Extractors. Lost as we were carrying the artifact from Vectera. Current whereabouts previously unknown. I see. Vasco already delivered the artifact. So, why are you showing up now? Hmm. Interesting. You want this rock breaker in our organization? After getting lost the first time? But... He still showed up, didn't he? Isn't persistence a signature trait for an explorer? We're at the beginning of a very important discovery here. What you found on Vectera, the artifact, there's more. And they're creating something we don't understand yet. If you're serious about wanting to be a part of this, then you have to know that we are diving headfirst into the unknown. There could be considerable risks. We probably know as much as you do at this point. As you can see, they're forming something now that we have multiple pieces. What it is, we'll have to find out together. Good. We'll set you up with a room. Take some time to meet everyone. Then, when you're ready, you and I will be doing some traveling together. Get your feet wet. As much as I love uncovering new questions, I wouldn't mind a few answers now and then. That was intense, wasn't it? The artifacts, I mean. Sorry, this must all be a little overwhelming for you right now. I guess a lot overwhelming, now that I think about it. I'm Noelle. It's really nice to meet you. And thank you for bringing the artifact to us. Well, Constellation's been around forever, more than 50 years now, but we only became aware of the artifacts recently. Barrett discovered the first one about two years ago, right under our noses, and he was the one who got this all in motion. It's a shame he isn't here to see this. Oh, right, that. If we're approaching this rationally, I suppose we'd call them visual and auditory hallucinations. What you perceived as lights and music could be overloaded neural input, your brain's attempt to make sense of something, an energy surge, some other phenomenon. He did, 
At the time, well, it's Barrett. We weren't sure if he was kidding around. Clearly, he wasn't. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of people report in these situations. I'm not saying you didn't really see anything, just that it's really hard to determine after the fact. That's okay. Now that this has happened to both you and Barrett, we can know to maybe expect it in the future. Be a little more prepared. We're all in this together now, right? Planning on sticking around then? Good. I think we can find a spot for you. And along the way, I can give you the very abbreviated tour. Right, so you've seen the library, obviously. Walter is quite proud of the collection, but Matteo has made more than a few contributions. Gardens are out the doors Another there. round of invoices is a moment of soon, quiet Walter. contemplation. Never Emphasis ends. on the quiet part. At Dare least I ask what I'm paying for now. Let's head upstairs. Artifacts won't find Sebastian Banks, Constellations founder, had this place built decades ago. Of course, it's the occasional. It was a big to-do at the time, but most people in the city have forgotten we're here. So this is the bar, usually no tender, so help yourself, within reason, of course. Now let's see about that room. You're in luck. We were almost at max occupancy already, but there's still one room up for grabs. It's been nice having the place so full. on one side, so that'll be quiet, and Mateo on the other side, so maybe a little less quiet. I'm sure Sarah has something planned for each of us, so I'd better get back to it. Don't want to keep her waiting too long. Enjoy! Got something for me? So, are you ready to get to work? Or was there something else? Not much, but you've seen them for yourself. It doesn't take a lot to realize we're dealing with something extraordinary. Just what that is, we'll have to figure out. It's what we do. I don't know what you've heard, but I can imagine. First of all, I think you can dismiss any stories about us no longer existing. Hmm? I don't believe in smearing our name everywhere we can. Exploring the universe, charting the unknown, that's what counts. Besides, having a little mystery gives us room to maneuver. A fixed reputation could fence us in a lot of ways. We're explorers. Humanity has always hunted for knowledge in the unknown. We just take that a little more seriously than others. We were founded decades ago by a man named Sebastian Banks. He wanted a small group of people from all corners of the settled systems dedicated to the biggest question of all. What's out there? These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. 
Another great secret the universe is asking us to unravel. We're going to be doing some old-fashioned detective work. The artifacts are relatively inert once they're out of bedrock. That means people can pass them around, not even knowing what they are. I've been letting my contacts know to be on the lookout for strange metal objects. Get back a lot of noise, usually. But a tip from the UC Vanguard sounds promising. A volunteer force that helps defend the edges of United Colonies space. They're always looking for recruits. Lots of retired veterans and dangerous professionals mixed in with part-timers who barely have a laser cannon welded to a hull. My contact is in the recruiting office, so he hears a lot about what the volunteers are up to. We have to assume that we're not the only ones to have stumbled into this mystery. But most people aren't going into space looking for the unknown. They're looking for places to settle, resource to extract, territory to defend. An odd-looking rock or a single strange hunk of metal wouldn't mean much to them. That's why Constellation exists, in a way. To put pieces like this together. Felt the same way when I started, too. There's an electricity in the air when you know you're about to uncover something. But it's not just that. I want to take this opportunity to see how you handle yourself, and for you to learn more about us. I'm going to be sticking with you for this. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact, or this lead runs dry. We'll need to head to Mast. Check in with the Vanguard recruiting office where my contact works. And listen, whatever you were before, or whatever you do once you're out there, I don't care. So long as you don't bring UC security to our doorstep. Every member of Constellation is their own conscience. Understood? Good. Let's take a little stroll through New Atlantis, shall we? Sarah, good to see you. Who's your friend? Hopefully Constellation's newest member. Thought I'd run through some legwork together. Ah, uh, another space explorer. Hey, you ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies, earn some credits, even get your UC citizenship? United Colonies volunteer fleet. Independent captains enlist, get to use their own ships, and the UC provides them with sustained work and credits. And put in your time and you're guaranteed UC citizenship and everything that comes with it. Discounts on UC goods and medical services, chance to own a place in New Atlantis. Only way a foreign captain could even dream of seeing those sorts of benefits. So, you want in? Excellent. Just need to do a little paperwork. An orientation on the UC, a knockout on an exam, and a probationary mission. We need to know you'll be able to hack it out there after all. Do well. 
You'll be out there keeping the peace in no time. Don't forget, John. I need him back after you wrap him in that fancy get-up of yours. No worry, Sarah. I'm not forgetting about you or our little business afterwards. Promise. First things first. Head down to the orientation hall. Get signed up at the registration terminal. System will walk you through the rest. Oh. Yes? You needed something? Registration accepted. You may now proceed through the historical displays in the orientation hall, or continue on to the examination. In 2015, humanity learned the Earth's magnetosphere would collapse sometime in the next half century, eliminating all life on the planet. Decisive action was required, but the secure transport of an entire civilization would demand a new kind of cooperation, a new kind of courage, and a new kind of union. Thus, in 2159, the United Colonies were formed to make that journey possible. Just one year later, the Galileo, the first of many colony ships, touched down here on Jemison, beginning a new era of human history, the age of the United Colonies. The effort and planning it must have taken to evacuate literally the entire planet. Can you imagine? The logistics alone must have been mind-boggling. It was only in 2230 that the faction known as House of Arun first made contact with the rest of the settled systems. Founded by the passengers of a colony ship that had left New Atlantis and disappeared four decades earlier, House Varun was a faction unlike any other. A theocracy dedicated wholly to the beliefs of its isolationist founder, Janan Varun. House Varun initially made overtures of peace towards the rest of the settled systems. They claimed their only intention was to spread the word of their god, the Great Serpent. But none could have guessed that this worship might take the form of a bloody war, the Serpent's Crusade. The Freestar Collective was initially founded in 2188, when the citizens of Aquila banded together with the pleasure city of Neon in mutual defense. But in 2194, after the deployment of a UC medical star station in orbit around their world, the citizens of Narion also requested to join the collective. The resulting rise in tensions between the Free Star Collective and UC culminated in the settled system's first intergalactic conflict the Narion War. Despite a decisive victory by the UC, the colonies permitted the citizens of Narion to join the Collective, forming the basis for the fiercely independent union that persists to this day. declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating the Serpent's Crusade. Over the next 23 years, thousands of Freestar, UC, and independent souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their Serpent God. 
It was only with the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. There remains, however, select members of House Varun who refuse to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders established. Even after House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their pacification, a goal of all space. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, none was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. Set off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Nereon Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs. Even bio-engineered alien creatures, the infamous UC Xeno weapons. It was only in 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies, out of an interest in staving off any further human costs, accepted. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. The colony war was a horrible conflict that irreparably wounded the civil systems. There were times I felt that it would never end. were left untouched by the colony war. But nowhere could the viciousness of modern warfare be seen more clearly than on the free star planet of Nera. Initially occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position, repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks, a nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. And today, Nera remains a continuing reminder to the horrors of unfettered war. This thing's like an artist's rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort, Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds, Terramorphs swept over the city, seemingly out of nowhere, on a scale never before seen in recorded history. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city. The outbreak and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day.
it was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. An official branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. And after a sufficient length of service, UC citizenship is guaranteed to every Vanguard member. Open to all captains, regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. simulators just like these. They're startlingly realistic. Have fun. This is the Mark 18 flight simulation chamber applicant, currently in orbit around a high detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. Your exam is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. Defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant.
may now exit the simulator through the hatch to record your current score, or stay and try your hand at the remaining tiers. Congratulations, applicant. You've passed. You can head up to Commander Tuwala to receive your final results and your probationary assignment. Or you're welcome to take another run at the simulation if you'd like to try and earn a better score. We'll only keep your best run. If you don't have official business, we ask you remain in the lobby. Well, look who's back. Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you have some questions you needed answered first? Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. You ready to hear how you did? Then let's get to them. So, looking at the data, checked out a few of the murals. Good. A test of preparation and thoroughness. Two traits the Vanguard values highly. Your physiological results are... Huh. That's odd. The system couldn't get a read on you. You get your kicks flying too close to stars? Because you're putting out some... interesting radiation. Don't worry, though. It's not going to affect your score. It's just, uh... different is all. But, uh, where were we? Now, how'd you do against your foes? All right. Clear Tier 3. We try to set a high bar, so that's no small feat. Nice work. Hell of a job. I might even let you fly me around sometime. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and presuming you're successful in completing your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only... 10 years service. Better than your average lab rat or diplomat, but pretty standard for folks going out into combat. Ten years might seem like a long time, but it's worth the climb if you wish to become a citizen. So, sounds to me like we've got Vanguard material on our hands. If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. First, though, all UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. So, you want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? It's a big decision. John, you're not about to have my compatriot here sign some kind of contract that sells you their grandmother five years down the line, are you? Officer's honor, Sarah. This is honest work for honest credits. So, you ready to do the deed? Fantastic. Then just follow me. Wouldn't be right doing this where we couldn't see the skies. Now, raise your right hand. The motto of the Vanguard is Supra et Ultra, above and beyond. That is where we serve, beyond the furthest reaches of the United Colonies military, and with honor and duty above reproach. Do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the United Colonies to the best of your abilities, and to uphold the values of the Vanguard Honor, loyalty, self-reliance in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy?
Then let me be the first to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing left is getting you that probationary mission. And what I've got is... comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plant on Tau Ceti II. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Place is as isolated as they come, so Brass wants a vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. So, can the people of Tau Ceti II count on you? That's the spirit. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite plus your new recruit kit. Oh, and your advance. Give it your all out there. Supra et Ultra. Head down to the spaceport and speak to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you where you need to go. Right. Got so wound up bringing you on board, I almost forgot. <laughs> oh, I haven't. Come on, John. Let's hear it, before you try to convince him to join the Marines. All right. Here's what I've got. Vanguard volunteer by the name of Moera. Helps patrol the old neighborhood. Sol, Mars, Neptune, you know. The Sol system? Which admiral did he upset to get that posting? He's Martian, born and raised. Not like I can get anyone else to care. Word is he's got some fancy metal ornament he's been showing off to the old grounders. Matches that description Sarah gave me. Oh, he goes way back. I think he was recruit number 81 or something. You kidding? Lowest posting request rate in the whole fleet. Only thing there the UC cares about is Mars. And no one wants to go to Mars. They want to get off Mars. Soul